Custom editor windows. They can ease your workflow, but they can also take a lot of time to create and maintain. With Odin Inspector, creating custom editor windows is almost as easy as creating custom inspectors. Now there are two classes of editor windows with Odin. The first is Odin Editor Window, which allows the creation of custom editor windows in the same way that custom inspectors are created. You define fields and functions, and then use attributes to create the editor window. That's about as simple as it could be. The second type is Odin Menu Editor Window, which is going to be the focus of this video. It allows the easy creation of a navigation tree on the side of the window. For this video, I'll be looking to create an editor to create and manage scriptable objects, and the navigation tree is perfect for this. To get started, I'll add an editor folder to my scripts folder. I need to do this because Unity will throw an error when building a project if editor scripts are not in an editor folder. With that done, I'll create a new c -sharp script called Enemy Data Editor. Opening up the script, the first thing I need to do is add a handful of libraries, including Unity Editor, Serenix.OdinInspector, Serenix.OdinInspector.Editor, and finally, Serenix.Utilities.Editor. I then need to change what the script inherits from to Odin Menu Editor Window. When I do this, Visual Studio will show an error as I need to implement and override the function Build Menu Tree. This is the function that creates the navigation tree for the window. But before adding to that function, I want to add another function to allow the editor window to be open from the Unity menus. I'll add a private static function called Open Window. In that function, I just need one line. It's Get Window enemy data editor as a type dot show. I'll also add the attribute menu item with the argument tools forward slash enemy data so the editor can be opened from the tools menu. With that done, the window can be opened, but there's nothing much to look at. So let's fix that. And we can do that by adding just a few lines to the build menu tree function. The first is to create a new variable called tree and set that equal to an instance of a new Odin menu tree, like so. This is also the value that the function will return, so I'll add a return line. Next, I want to add something to the tree. In this case, I want to add all the enemy data scriptable objects, and I can do this in just one line using the command tree.addAllAssets at path. The function requires a couple arguments. The first is the name of a collapsible header, and I'll give it the name enemy data. The second argument is the path for the assets, which in my case is just assets forward slash scripts. The third argument is the type of asset that we want to add, which in this case is enemy data. There are more arguments to control how subfolders are handled, but in my case, I'll ignore them as the default values will do just fine. A quick save and compile, and back into Unity, we can see that the editor's already looking pretty good. If you've ever created your own editor windows, you know how long it can take to create. And here, with just about 20 lines of code, it's working and looking pretty nice. Now, while this is good to view and edit the data, I want to go a couple steps further. I'd like to add the ability to create new scriptable objects, and this is pretty easy to do. I can do this by creating a new class and adding it to the tree. Since the new class is only going to be used by this editor, I'll add it to the editor script and call it create new enemy data. Before adding content to the class, I want to add it to the navigation tree. To do this, I simply add the line tree.add to the build menu tree function. The first argument gives a name for the item in the navigation tree, and the second is the object that will get displayed. Saving the script and letting Unity compile, I can see the results in the editor. Nothing is shown in the editor as the class has no fields or functions. I need to create those just like I would for a custom inspector. In this case, the class is going to consist of one field and one function plus a constructor. The field will be of type enemy data. I'll make it public and add the attribute inline editor with the argument object field mode equals inline editor object field modes dot hidden. This hides the field but shows the inline editor. Next, I'll create a constructor that will create a new instance of the enemy data scriptable object and set the enemy name field to a generic value of new enemy data, like so. So far, this is looking nice but hasn't added much functionality. The instance of the scriptable object exists in memory, but it needs to get added to the project files to be more useful. To do this, I'll create a function that will get called when a button is pressed in the editor. I'll create a new private function called create new data and add a button attribute with the argument add new enemy scriptable object to give a custom label to the button. 
this function needs to create a new asset and save that asset. And this can all be done with just two lines, like so. The first line has two arguments. The first is the object that will become the new asset, and the second is the path and name for the new asset. In this case, I'm going to use the name of the enemy as the name of the asset. And then the second line, all that does is save all the assets in your project. This will turn the instance of the scriptable object into an asset, so the code also needs to create a new instance of the scriptable object for the editor window. To do that, I can copy the two lines from the constructor, like so. A quick test in Unity, and we can see that things are working, and we're able to create a new scriptable object from the editor. Now while this is working, I want to add a bit more code to help Unity clean up and avoid potential throwing of errors or warnings. In particular, I want to destroy the instance of the enemy data scriptable object when the editor window closes. So I'm going to store a reference to the instance of the create new enemy data class that's created in the menu tree. And I'll do this by creating a new field. Then in the build menu tree function, I'll cache a reference to the new instance of the create new enemy data and set the tree to open this new instance. With that done, the next thing I need to do is override the onDestroy function. In the function, I'll call base.onDestroy to make sure to not lose any functionality. I'll then check that the instance of create new enemy data isn't null, and if it isn't, I'll use destroy immediate to destroy the instance of the enemy data scriptable object. That tidies things up a bit and makes sure we're not leaving instances dangling and lost in memory. For many, this might be enough to be useful, but I'd also like to add the ability to delete these scriptable objects from inside this editor and make it a one-stop place to manage the enemy data. Now, of course, there are a bunch of ways to do this, but I think one of the better is to add a button to the top that will delete the currently selected scriptable object. To do this, I can override the function onBeginDrawEditors. The first thing I want to do in the function is get a reference to the currently selected item. I can do this with the command this.menutree.selection. Next, I'll mark the beginning and the end of the toolbar with the commands Serenix Editor GUI dot begin horizontal toolbar and Serenix Editor GUI dot end horizontal toolbar. Then in between those commands, I'll add a GUI layout dot flexible space, and this is going to force the button to the right of the toolbar. I can then create the button with the line if Serenix Editor GUI dot toolbar button, where the argument of this function gives a label to the button. Inside the if statement, I'll cast the currently selected object to the type enemy data, like so. And then I'll use the command asset database dot get asset path to get a path to the asset. With that done, I can delete the asset and update the asset databases by calling asset database dot save assets. Do note that if you have different types of scriptable objects in your editor, you'll need to be more clever with the typecasting and may need to be more sophisticated with the deleting of assets. With the editor complete, let's take a quick run through what we've created and how it works. From the tools menu, I can open the editor window. Then using the menu tree, I can navigate through all the enemy data scriptable objects in my scripts folder. I can easily modify any of the fields in the scriptable objects, which makes for a super handy way of tweaking our game data. If I click on the create new button, I can set values for a new enemy, including associating a new model and stats. Clicking the button at the bottom adds a scriptable object to the project assets. With the scriptable object as an asset, I can then use it in the game just like I did in earlier videos. Dropping the new scriptable object into the enemy control script will load the model and set all the stats. Hopefully you can see how easy Odin makes this all to accomplish and gives you some ideas of how to create custom editors for your project. We'd love to hear your ideas and see what you're creating with Odin, so drop a comment below or come share it on the DevDog Discord. And until next time, happy game designing.